James Kaufman, World News Report today, October 26, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Well, ladies and gentlemen, last night, y'all know I stayed up till 3 a.m. covering this explosion that lasted so long. Started out with an M9.44 solar flare, followed by an X1.86, 1.87, depending on who you ask, all generated from Sunspot Group AR3872. Now, this is not the same Sunspot Group that generated the X3.33. That was Sunspot Group AR3872. 6 9, although they're very close together and could be considered one sunspot group. AR3879, the culprit with this double flare here, is extremely complex delta class sunspot group, and this created a halo chronal mass ejection, which means Earth is going to be in its path. NASA has modeled that, and we'll take a look at that model. Over to GOES X-ray flux. This looked like one of the biggest explosions I've seen on the Earth-facing side of our solar disk. It was a quote-unquote double flare starting with an M9.44 and ending with an X1.86, although it looked so much stronger, i.e. the explosion itself. I watched the long duration explosion and was, well, very impressed, but couldn't believe that it only registered a 1.86 on our GOES X ray flux. And that's according to NOAA and NASA and every other source I could find. But the other problem I have is, well, we are in a polar cap absorption event, which I will show you shortly. But during the flare and after the flare itself, we didn't see our absorption prediction center and our x-ray flux uh, really shoot up and look like it should have for such a large flare. It looked like it reflected a very small flare. I have my questions about this flare as well. Over to our GOES proton flux. All right, this was a freaky deal, obviously. The other x-flare happened somewhere around here, the 3.33, actually around 4 UTC time here, which is only 11 p.m. Uh, two nights ago, if you will, but really 4 UTC time on the 24th. And we didn't see much happen to our proton flux, although it steadily went up, which I've not seen before. Now, the last explosion, two explosions, happened here, right around 6 UTC time. Uh, last night at 3 a.m. into 7 UTC time. And we didn't see our protons shoot up at that point. But we have seen them shoot up over the last one or two hours into space weather threshold conditions. So we're about to be, or we are in a proton storm. With that said, we can't see any protons hitting our Lasco C3 as we always do during a proton storm. Protons are the little white dots, if you will, uh, that appear to be flying everywhere in a proton storm. So this is after the eruption here, and we can't pick it up during the eruption, but I did do a video showing you how minute our x-ray flux was and our radio alternation was. And then we go for hours without anything happening. And then all of a sudden, it flashes on just all of a sudden and flashes off, on, off, on. And then all of a sudden, we're in a proton absorption event. Now watch, it just gets worse here, but this makes zero sense. First off, the, well... The solar flare uh, did not really cause a large radio alternation whatsoever. And it was very faint, actually, as far as the X-ray flux seen on our absorption prediction center here. All of a sudden now, 
we're in a polar cap absorption event. I'm wondering if someone is not messing with these tools or models. These things are not fitting together like they always have and usually do. Now, please remember, we're under a G1 geomagnetic storm watch currently. And I believe that we are or have entered one. I will show you all that in just a moment as well. However, uh, this is Lasco from the explosion. You can see a huge, absolutely huge halo, halo, all sides, coronal mass ejection, which means that Earth should be in the path of this explosion. This happened on the Earth-facing side of our solar disk. This was the double explosion that occurred right around 6 UTC time, 7 UTC time. You can see the clock there. Now, just to start with, NASA modeled the X3.33 hitting Earth more so than this latest double whammy. This barely strikes Earth, but they've actually predicted a G1, G2, which today we're looking for a G1 geomagnetic storm, which I believe we have entered. Of course, my question has to be, why is this flare with a complete halo eruption going, well, really further to the left of Earth than the X3.33 that was partially eclipsed by the limb? But uh, NASA modeled it as hitting Earth more directly than these, well, this double whammy we had last night. Lots of questions about this situation. Again, we saw the complete halo eruption. So all of this should be covered that's Earth-facing. Uh, I would say even further so towards Stereo A, which should be on the other side of Earth. Over to STOHMI magnetogram, we've got a mess here. And this does look reverse polarity here. Positive over negative, white over black in the southern hemisphere. Uh, it looks like that this is going to be a very active sunspot group or several sunspot groups, obviously. This was taken at 6.06 this morning, same as the other one. So this is after the double whammy. The M9.44 followed by the X1.86 solar flares. I'm going to show you what these sunspots look like. Over to our Discover Real Time Solar Wind Satellite. It looks like we might have had an impact right in here of some sort. And we see some really high numbers here. A 29, something higher than that. Uh, this 33 here, and then we see solar winds pop up from 366 all the way over 500. So this is definitely solar winds being pushed by that CME off that X3.3. This is going to be the impact time period. Now, our KP index said nothing big here. So I'm guessing the next KP index bar to drop covering this time period is going to show either a disturbance or a star, uh, storm, geomagnetic storm, which I believe has started. And that's going to be from the X3.3 flare that happened just over two days ago. We can confirm all this with the rise in temperature in green. So I've got two huge questions here. Three, really. Why? Is the CME modeled to go even further to our south than the X3.3 that looks like it's impacting now? Why did the D Region Absorption Prediction Center, when that flare popped off, not show a very large impact whatsoever as far as X rays? And why did it take so long to move into a polar cap absorption event? And why are we seeing no protons on LASCO C3? as we always do during an event of this nature. It does look like we're entering a proton storm or have entered a proton storm. No white specks on LASCO. So many of this does not fit together. I have lots of questions about this. If anyone can give me any answers, please do in the comments below. Remember, 
Before this administration got into office, this stuff fit together like a puzzle, a perfect puzzle with no missing pieces. Now it's nothing but missing pieces. With that said, God bless. Please share and subscribe. Always remember that anything's possible in Bizarro World.